camera. <laughs> Fabulous, gorgeous, and welcome everybody. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Dave. Blue sky, 66 degrees here with the wind blowing left to right here at the Peoria Stadium. Dave Sims, Mike Blowers with you, and we get to look at Drew Smiley here. Drew Smiley making his second start of the spring. This is the first here at home. First pitch is in there for called strike one to Delano De Shields. We played umpire Trip Gibson, Chris Guccione, Ramon De Jesus, and Travis Eager. Working the bases today. Had a chance, chance to talk to Smiley at FanFest, and he, you know, looking at this outfield, Mike, and we talk about all the time with the outfield they have here, the spaciousness at Safeco Field. He's happy to be here being a fly ball pitcher. No, I think that you're absolutely right, and I know that they've tried to make some adjustments to help him get the ball on the ground from time to time when he needs to, and something I was talking to Mel Stottlemyre about. He's going to go three innings today. That's what they'd like to see from him. Uh, we've talked a lot about the World Baseball Classic, and I thought it was interesting. Mel talking about Smiley was saying that where they have him scheduled, if he's going to pitch in the Classic, there's going to be about 12 to 13 days in between this start and that, so he's going to actually pitch in a simulated game on the ninth and just pitch an inning just so he can face some batters. So DeShields is a strikeout victim. Good start for Drew Smiley. And and so I, I think that's a great idea because I asked him, I said, is he just going to be stuck in the bullpen? And he said, that's the reason why they had the simulated game on the ninth. And again, he's just going to pitch one inning. Doesn't sound like much, but he just wants to see, have him see some hitters before he gets into the classic. He's gonna face Drew Robinson here, the center fielder today for the Texas Rangers. Mariners lost to the Rangers over at Surprise on Friday, 8-2. to two. For Smiley, first time out. It was at Cleveland five days ago. Over a good year, a walk, two strikeouts over two scoreless innings. College roommate of Dallas Keuchel, Houston left-hander and Cy Young Award winner, University of Arkansas. Pig Suey. Well, we were impressed with Smiley when we saw him coming up in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you have to hope he's just going to bounce back. Tough year for him last year, and it's something that Mel Stoudemire was talking about. He likes him a lot. 7-12 and 12 record last year to 4.88 ERA. Up in the high sky coming in is Dyson with the glasses on. And two down. Take a look at the lineup for the Rangers. Just saw the Shields. He brings some speed to the lineup. Normally it'd be center field, but it's DH. The Adrian Beltre, the veteran, just keeps on going. He's going to hit third. Joey Gallo will swing and miss a lot, but he also has tremendous power. He's the cleanup hitter. And James only the veteran first baseman. An interesting sign for the Rangers. Typically hits for average, but not a lot of power for the first baseman. There's former Mariner and future Hall of Famer, Adrian Beltre. And he sends this one to right field. It's going to be a nice, clean inning for Drew Smiley. One, two, three in the first. Good to have you with us, everybody, from Peoria, Arizona. Mariners coming about when we return.
Thanks. Good to have you with us, everybody, as the Mariners get ready to swing the bat against A.J. Griffin. We'll take a look at the Mariner batting order. Dyson going to lead things off playing center field. A lot of speed in the lineup today. Mitch Hanniger, he's the guy that's been interesting. He's going to hit second. Already a home run here in spring. He'll be out in right field. Then you have Mike Zanino, a home run the other day against the Rockies. He's hitting sixth in the lineup. And Sean O'Malley, when you get a chance to play a lot, that's shortstop batting ninth today. There's A.J. Griffin. His second season with the Texas Rangers. Spent a couple of years with the Athletics. Gerard Dyson looks at a strike. He's got the best Twitter handle, I think, in the universe. It's at Mr. Zumbaya. <laughs> I love it. M-R-Z-O-O-M-B-I-Y-A. Mr. Zumbaya's nickname is Zoom. So where'd you get that? Did you give it to yourself or somebody give it to you? No, no, that's my nickname, man. Well, stroke, but foul. Well, Mariner fans are hoping to see a lot of that zoom by you. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? That's great. <laughs> Remember, so many years, Tim McCarver would always talk about Linda Ronstadt, and somebody would have uh, would throw a really good fastball. He said, yeah. that was the Linda Ronstadt, Blue Bayou. <laughs> Playing off her Blue Bayou song. Dyson goes down swinging, one down. Looks like it's just a pretty good fastball on the outside corner. Elevated a little bit above the belt as he swings underneath it. A little, little bit late on the swing. Here's Mitch Hanniger to face A.J. Griffin. Off-season conversations with Jerry DePoto and stuff that you've seen in all the media. Mike, he is so high on Mitch Hanniger after acquiring him from Arizona. Yeah, it was one of the things that I had a chance to talk to him about, and, and you're right. He, he likes him a lot. This guy was high draft pick took him a few years to kind of figure things out as he gets hit with a curveball but he runs well throws well obviously has some power he hit a long home run already here in spring training hey Matt Friday he hit one dead central and surprise and then it hit one last week against the White Sox down in uh, Glendale this one just grazes him so Hanniger's a board and Hanniger said he wants to he wouldn't mind doing some running. He's a good athlete. Don't forget World Baseball Classic underway, so no, no Cruz, Cano, and Segura to start with. Felix left after yesterday. It's Kyle Seeger. Good conversation they had with him. With Kyle, yeah, it was, it was interesting. I was wondering how talkative he was going to be because I went down. They were having, having practice, batting practice on field four today. And... I was standing behind the cage and talking to Scott Brosh a little bit, and you were there too, Dave. And I was having a tough time of it, so I wasn't Whoa. sure if he wanted to have a conversation. You know, but you, I it was liked, great. I liked you were very gingerly approaching him. That was very good. I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> he fouled one off his foot. He was really ticked. Yeah. Well, I, I can appreciate it. That's the reason why. So, but he was he was great today. And talking That's to Scott, Scott. He, he says he's always tinkering with his swing. I said, I know. Scott's been a great addition. He and Edgar Martinez, boy, that is a great duo hitting coaches. As Kyle draws a four-pitch walk, there's yeah. early threat here. Plus, Scott made a good point, though. He said he's, he's always changed. I said, well, he improves every year. He goes, yes, he does. He goes, but what's wrong with 30 and 100 RBIs? 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, absolutely nothing. Where do I sign the check? Yeah, what a year he had. Here's Danny Valencia. First year with the Mariners. He's been well traveled over the course of his career. Minnesota, Boston, Baltimore, Kansas City, Toronto, and most recently Oakland. Last year, the 287, 17 homers, and 51 runs batted in. Bring some versatility. Play first, play third, corner outfield. The other thing, too, what his numbers. Improved dramatically against right hand hitting 275 last year and 318. He's always been good against lefty pitching. Oh, Popped it straight up. Sun going to be a factor today. Blue sky, sun's there. Here comes the left fielder, but the shortstop, Hendra Alberto, makes the play. I was talking to Dyson about that. He dropped one in surprise on Friday. He says, I got it, I got it, and goes and all of a sudden goes in the center. There's a black dot, and then you've got to cover your face. Yep. He had it all away, and then bingo, where'd it go? And down in it, there was a minor league game between the Padres and the Mariners. 
down on the big field down below and shortstop for San Diego got under one head all the way and in the last second just lost. It. Well between the sun and the way the ball carries here you're going to see the outfielders get fooled quite a bit the infielders as well. Daniel Vogelback DHing today and he was impressive yesterday yeah, with a couple of hits going the other way including a double in the left center gap off of a left hander and it was a breaking ball. Going back to a crazy he hit that one really hard. What was it? Second one looked like he might have got fooled a little bit, but he, you know, kept, as you mentioned, he kept the hands back just enough. He was yeah. able to get a barrel to it. I just like the fact that he, he both pitches were away from him, and one was a breaking ball, the other was a fastball, and he didn't roll over on either one of them. And we've talked about him hitting everywhere he's been, and you can see why using the entire field. So it's a good start here. Seven for 20. A couple of RBIs. Hitting 350 here in the spring. <laughs> Similar pitch that he hit yesterday. Well, Daniel Vogelback, DHing today, battling against AJ Griffin. Coming off a three inning scoreless performance Wednesday against the Angels. Swaying and a miss. Couldn't catch up to it. Mariners leave two on as we go to the second inning here in Peoria. Good day to do a little sunbathing here at the ballpark. Your local steel dealer, visit steeldealers.com. Get a look, a little ride down the Colorado River, Horseshoe Bend, in Glen Canyon. Good view through the cyclone fence at Happenings. Here at Peoria, here's Joey Gallo, third baseman by trade, blocked, of course, at third with Beltre here, so trying to make him an outfielder. He's got ridiculous pop. He homered in the Friday 8-2 win over the Mariners over in Surprise. Didn't work out for him real well last year when he was called up. It's 0 4 0 with a homer and a run batted in. Didn't get a lot of opportunities. It's big home run years. Well, I think down it's in the minors. Yeah, you mentioned those numbers, and for somebody like him that's a power guy, a big swing, I think it's difficult for him to be in and out of the lineup, spot starting here and there to keep his timing right. 
Uh, that's probably part of the issue for him. Just 17 games with the club last year. He's hit as many as 38 home runs at Hickory back in 2013. 25 home runs at Round Rock last year. Here's one popped up. Is it going to be playable? Taking a look, Zanino. And no play. Smiley, nice addition to this rotation for the Mariners. Shift on against Gallo. Full count. Gallo lead off the second. It is going to be important, Mike, for the Mariners to handle the Texas Rangers. Last year, Mariners 7 and 12 against Texas. They really took it on the chin down in Arlington, going 2 and 7. Then when you look at what the Mariners did against Houston last year, going 8 and 11, I mean, there's a big key right there. Well, when you look at the American League West, a lot of people are looking in Texas, whether it's Houston or the Rangers. They're right, both of them are typically right there, so you're right. It will be important uh, to get off to a fast start in your own division, especially against those clubs. This James Loney, really good glove man at first. Not much for power. Finished up last season. Uh, had a good run last year with the New York Mets. We'll see these Rangers. They'll be in Seattle April 14, 15, and 16, then May 5 through 7, and then September 19 through the 21st. <laughs> No, no, no. Outside 101 and then the Mariner visits to Texas June 16 through 18 July 31 August 2 and September 11 through the 14th. Don't forget the home opener against the Houston Astros open the season in Houston on the 3rd of April home opener is April 10th to 10. Here's a fly ball center field easy play for Dyson. Wind blowing left to right here. One out, one on bottom. I make that top of the second. Here's Travis Snyder out of Mill Creek. Then with Toronto, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore. Infield tilted to the right side for Snyder. A little late there. Strike one. Snyder on the spring so far. Three for 12. No homers, no runs batted in. Gallo, the runner at first. Ball one, one one. One of the things that we talk about all the time, we'll talk about it a lot this year, is defensive shifts, and the Mariners do a lot of it. A little bit surprised to see him put the shift on now. You can see Kyle Seeger out at the shortstop position. O'Malley, the shortstop today, over on the right side of the infield. But typically, you won't get into that type of alignment oh, until. Man. Hitter has a strike or possibly two on him because you're opening things up for an easy bunt. But it's amazing that hitters just they refuse to do it. They don't want to take that hit. Keep an inning going, start an inning, anything. It's yeah. maybe in spring training he just wants to swing the bat, but you would think that'd be something that you'd take advantage of. That's well, you know if you start laying down a bunt, it gets you practice for a regular season. There you go. One two. Rangers this year. It's 
some new players. Andrew Kashner trying to work his way back. He's a right-hand pitcher. Tyson Ross, both of them battling injuries. Check swing by Snyder. Gets away from Zanino. The runner advances. There's two down. And this looks like a wild pitch. Breaking ball down in the dirt. It's Snyder to chase, but Mike not able to keep it close to him. Second strikeout for Drew Smiley. It brings up A.J. Jimenez, catcher. Limited action so far, just two for three in the spring. But you look at this uh, Ranger ball club, gone from last year's ball club, Carlos Beltran, Ian Desmond, Colby Lewis, Mitch Moreland, and Sean Tolleson. You saw Desmond. Saturday with the Colorado Rockies. He's their new first baseman. Paul won him. Menez. Don't forget, single game tickets go on sale this Saturday morning. And a familiar face is going to be coming back on the 17th of April at Vitro. The Miami Marlins, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, two night games, and then a Wednesday matinee. Matter of fact, on Wednesday, the 19th getaway day, it's Ichiro dual bobblehead day. Two balls, one strike. Smiley, two strikeouts, one walk so far. Not giving up a hit. It's that corner, two and two. Mariner rotation, Felix, Iwakuma, Paxton, Smiley, and Gallardo. We're impressed with Gallardo on Saturday at Colorado. Look good. He was doing a lot of what Smiley's doing right now, and that is locating his fastball in the outside corner. A lot off. Zanino will throw down first, and that'll do it for the Rangers. Three strikeouts for Drew Smiley. When we come back, Mike Zanino will lead things off here in Peoria.
text us wondering where you are getting back into the swing of things. Use the hashtag where I root to presented by Alaska Airlines like Cherie right here. She also actually called me out on Twitter too. So there you go. I, I had to put this photo up. Use that hashtag where I root presented by Alaska Airlines and you can see your photo on the air. And guys, when they uh, use that hashtag, it gives us permission to use their photo on the air. Back to you. All right, Ange, thank you very much. Here's Mike Zanino to lead things off. Talking to Mike the other day, he said it's got a really much improved idea of his swing path. And Scott Brocious agreed today down at the cage when we were down there saying that he understands his package a lot better now. Well, Scott spent a lot of time with him last year when he was in AAA, trying to help him out. I think when you understand your swing and what you're capable of doing, I think that helps you with your own strike zone, too. And that's a pitch right there. That borderline pitch away from Mike is a pitch that he's had issues with. And when we first saw him when he came to the big leagues last year, when he came back, he really did a good job of laying off that pitch. And then as the season went on, he started to chase a little bit more towards the end of the year, especially in September. But he certainly has the power to do that. Way out of here. Courtesy look by Joey Gallo. Home run, Mike Zanino. No doubt about it. Joey Gallo took a look. Just a matter how far that baby was going to go. And it went. Mike Zanino with his second home run of the spring. A resounding blast. One nothing Mariners. Well, what you want to do is you want to get yourself into good hitters counts in a 3-1 fastball right down the middle. And you hit it just to the right of the scoreboard, the new scoreboard out there, no doubt about it. So for Mike, continue to get in those good hitter count, take advantage of the fastball. Otto pops one right over our heads here, strike one. Otto two for nine on the spring. Talk to Scott Brocious a little bit later. World Series champion with the Yankees and MVP in the World Series, as a matter of fact. As we mentioned, big factor in Mike Zanino's success. He had 17 home runs. Did Zanino last year down at Tacoma? Fly ball to right. Travis Snyder under it. We'll talk about a hot hitter. How about this guy coming to the plate? Guillermo Heredia. Team leader with seven runs batted in and co-leader with Boog Powell with eight hits. Eight for 15. He's hitting 533. And there's the Sanino ball. <laughs> Big den is in it. It's Juan Hopper, Guillermo busting it down the line, thrown out by shortstop Hanser Alberto. Hey fans, Mariners 10 game flex packs. They're on sale right now. Enjoy the flexibility of picking the games and events you want to see, including opening day on April 10th. So make sure you, you're on hand by picking up your pack before single game tickets go on sale. For details, log on to Mariners.com slash flex. Two outs batting in a nine hole here in Sean O'Malley. He's been Rocking it hard here since January 7th down here in Peoria with Boog Powell and DJ Peterson. Well, you mentioned it earlier with Segura out of camp now because of the World Baseball Classic. He's getting a really good look at shortstop. Yeah, we'll see a lot of O'Malley, Motter, and Freeman up the middle. Sean and his wife Samantha expecting her first child, a little girl. As he singles through the whole right side base hit with two outs. His wife Samantha going to get birth in mid to late April. Back to the top of the order, Gerard Dyson struck out on a one two pitch. Seven seasons in Kansas City for Mr. Dyson. A couple of American League pennants and a World Series ring. You're going to love this to mention. In that seven seasons, 176 stolen bases. Last year at this time, we were talking to Scott Service about uh, his interest in the running game. It never really materialized. Power game 
came to the fore for the Mariners, but now you get this guy here. Talk about a fire starter, and Segura can run, and get O'Malley, one of those guys going, and Martin. Well, the other part about it from last year, too, is they just weren't stealing at a high enough percentage to where it made sense to them, and that's, that is not going to be a problem yep. with Dyson in there and Segura. These guys know what they're doing. Uh, Martin, you mentioned. So they'll, they'll still uh, at a better percentage. Runner goes, but foul. Oh, man. Two and two. He dared to test Adrian Beltre. Sure, some smiles and glances were exchanged. <laughs> Future Hall of Famer. I think O'Malley had that base stolen, too. He Pretty did. good jump. Popped it up. Shortstop Alberto. Solid catch there. That'll do it. Highlight of the inning. Mike Zanino got a three run pitch and he didn't miss it. Long ride out onto the berm and the Mariners have a one nothing lead. Football season was over. So we talked to his. on it and Mr. Valley your order is about ready for pickup as we welcome you back to Mary oh. Baseball Dave Simpson Mike Flowers what do you say Val good to talk to you how are you if I didn't love you guys so much I, I would be I would be sitting in that booth right now if I was down there in Arizona <laughs> hey, we know it. that's right Mr. Valley your seat is ready hey uh, what'd you think of Zanino and his continued development here with the Mariner Ball Club you know it's just great to see Mike get off to a, a nice start here in spring training uh, you know, you go through the winter, you know there's different things that you have to work on in your game if you want to continue to improve and to continue to develop as a major league catcher. But to show up in spring training and have that success that quickly like we've seen, Mike, uh, you know, we know he's got the power. That ball was absolutely crunched. That was on top of the berm out there in Peoria. So it's just good to see him swinging a bat, and hopefully that will just that kind of continue on with that confidence for Mike behind the plate. Val, can you pick up just a couple of things? We, we talk about Mike and his defense all the time, and um, you know what a nice job he does. But, but pick a couple of things that you really like um, about Mike behind the plate. Well, one of the things I, I like is athleticism. Uh, I think he does a great job of blocking the baseball. That was something I took a lot of pride in. And it, you're not good at it unless you work at it. And it is yeah. tough to, to practice it because you're bouncing on your knees. You have to have a great anticipation skill by also knowing your pitcher. So, for instance, when Felix is throwing that nasty changeup, he likes to bury it in the dirt. And Mike's got to be able to anticipate that pitch being down there. But it may not be down there. So you're kind of on your toes the entire time. And, uh, you know, he does it as good as anybody in the game of baseball. Now, we, we, we talk about it, you know, certain pitchers, they're 
fly ball pitchers or ground ball pitchers and we were talking about Smiley earlier and um, definitely a fly ball pitcher when you look at the numbers is there anything that you can see on the reason why and, and what will he have to do to try to keep the ball on the ground if that's the route that he wants to go well I think he's a guy that is still going to get a lot of outs up in the strike zone uh, you know I kind of rem reminds me a little bit of Mark Langston former Seattle Mariner pitcher early in Mark's career he was a fly ball guy but he got a lot of strikeouts across the top of the strike zone with two strikes he liked to run that ball right above the letters which is a really tough pitch for hitters to lay off of but I think I think with Drew Smiley I think what's going to help him get the ball on the ground a little bit more is just having a little better command of his secondary pitches whether it's his changeup or his breaking ball but I think his fastball is best when he's be being able to move it up and down through that strike zone. Val, always a pleasure, my man. Same here, guys. Enjoy hear that from sunshine. You. Yes, sir. <laughs> Count on it. Dave, Dave Valley joining us here. Two down. Nice catch in foul territory by Mitch Hanniger. Bring up the catcher, Drew Robinson. Flat out to center's first time. Two outs here in the top, the third one nothing and a Mike Zanino leadoff homer in the home second.
Two or more suites, you'll receive a free private suite for select games. Your clients will enjoy a great space to catch the game, and you're going to enjoy great savings. For more info, log on to Mariners.com slash premium. Second walk issued by A.J. Griffin. Both have been to Seager. Here's Danny Valencia popped up the short first time. First baseman Loney coming over, taking a look. No play. Again, I like the fact that with so many new faces here, among them Valencia and Chuch Ruiz, Carlos Ruiz, both and others have said, Hanniger said it, that this is such a fine situation coming into this Mariner Ball Club with the holdovers and the coaching staff. And very, just a very comfortable fit here. Alberto, just get the one. And moving over to third is Hanniger. A race Seeger. A little bit of a bobble is the reason why they weren't able to turn the double play. Good hustle by Danny to get down the line. Beat it out. I think that's it's really what you're talking about, Dave, is I think it's a reflection on the way that Scott Service runs his camp. He makes everybody from the youngest guys and the most rookie guys feel as important as everybody else. And they, they certainly have a good time with their meetings in the morning, but you can just see it when they're on the field getting their work in. Oh, there's no question. And it starts with those 9 o'clock meetings. Yep. It was. Uh, it sounded like an absolute laugh fest uh, yesterday about 9 o'clock as Vogelback looks at strike one. They kept. I kept hearing uh, journeys don't stop believing, and obviously I, I haven't seen it. And we'll have to get more information, yeah. but it was some kind of video they were clearly showing, and you were hearing guys laughing mm. like crazy. I ran into Scott in the hallway I guess before that, and I said, where'd you get your modus operandi? I mean, what, what's uh, in terms of pulling people together? How did you develop that? And he said, you know, from being in the front office for a lot of years, a couple with the Angels, with Texas, he's a catcher, so he's got to be, you know, as a catcher by trade, he was a guy that had to bring people together, bring a coaching, uh, a pitching staff together. And then he said he's borrowed a lot. He's such a football fan. He's borrowed a lot from the football mentality where he says, listen, they're always having meetings. Let's talk to Pete Carroll and a whole bunch of other guys around the country to get ideas and they put them in play here. And it's working out pretty nicely for him. Two and two to Vogel back, one out, two on. Breaking ball. Popped up, here comes Gallo. Long run, hey, he's not gonna get it. Mariners are gonna get a run as Hanniger will score and Valencia moves up to second so a bloop RBI single Daniel Vogelback his third RBI of the spring two nothing Mariners we'll take a look at it just trying to serve it in the left field kind of a half swing Gallo we mentioned it earlier typically an infielder he had a late break on it not able to close the ground Vogelback at first, I'll take the base hit in an RBI. Oh, yeah. Never seen anybody give one back like that. Never going to. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Here's Mike Zanino. Got Brocious. I said, give me, a, give me a batting average you think would be a nice batting average for Zanino. I said, listen, if he could hit 250 with, his, with the damage that he does, so I'm not asking him to hit 280, 290, 300. Just hit 250. All right, makes sense. So he saw in that last home run, he is some kind of strong. His comfort level so much better now, to play at least in the here, here in the early going. Yeah, I, I think for him, it's it's you'd like to see him get off to a pretty good start this year, just to get his confidence going in the right direction. There you go. That'll work into the game. Valencia will ease on home. Vogelback is motoring. He's getting a wave on. Chug it home, big fella. Here's the throw to the plate. Not in time. Two-run double, Mike Zanino. And Vogelback scoring from first. Yes, indeed. 
Mariners have a 4 nothing lead. They we're talking about the home run and stays on this. A little bit of an off-speed pitch, maybe a slider or a cut fastball, and lines it into left center field. Mike having a good day already. Three RBIs, a couple of extra base hits. Boy, hit the ball well. Solid contact. Is Taylor Motter flied out to right. Battle of hairstylists, Motter and Griffin. I'd say Griffin's a little bit longer. Oh! This one tagged. Look at it carrying this baby. Get out of here. Two run homer, Taylor Motter. Mariners surging here in the third. A two run homer by Taylor Motter. He's taking the lead to 6 0 here in the third. And it's an impressive swing from Motter. After the breaking ball, he just tomahawks a high fastball on the inner half of the plate. You can see how high it is above the belt, but he gets the barrel to it and drives it out to left center field. It's an impressive swing. The battle for utility player in this ball club, O'Malley, Motter, and Freeman. And in the conversation I had with Depoto about a month ago, and I said, "Well, O'Malley's got the he's got the utility role wrapped up." He says, "Hey, man, he's got to make the team." He says, "Motter, wait till you see this Motter kid." Yeah, when you get in the lineup, you, you better take advantage of it. So many times we're talking about spring training and veteran guys and, and kind of working their way into it. Uh, pitchers some days are going to maybe work on just their breaking ball hitters maybe uh, want to see as many pitches as possible when you're trying to make a club you don't have that luxury and you better get your hits when you have a chance and Absolutely. O'Malley with a base hit in this one. Here's a ready looks at a strike How about this three consecutive hits as Preston Claiborne starts to warm up RBI single Vogel back a two run double by Zanino and a two run homer by Motter. You love the big innings. Got a battle here, 0-2. Breaking ball, oh. get him looking. Two down. Here in the third. Third strikeout for A.J. Griffin. Bring up O'Malley, eighth man to the plate here in the third inning. Sean with a base hit to right his first time. His sixth hit this spring, hitting at six for 17. Having a good run. Third inning, six nothing. Mariners. Here's the one one. <laughs> Foul off. So Sean tried to lay down a bunt. I think it was yesterday, and that's one of the things he worked on since coming down here early on. Yeah, it was yesterday. It was close play at first. Even ended up getting thrown out. Don't forget everybody the home opener coming up on 10th of April against Houston a 2 10 start get those tickets. Nobody puts on a better opening day than the Mariners. Always a big spectacle and a lot of good vibes watching these guys run out in the red carpet. Got a line foul. O'Malley remember that play made as a right fielder diving into the stands sort of like a Derek Jeter point 2 0 great play 
didn't bust up his face, thank goodness, or any ribs, but it it could have been ugly. And that's definitely a possibility. Here's Taylor Motter. Two run homers, first of the spring, first two runs batted in. I think the other thing that Sean did last year when he had a chance to play, he brought some energy to the ball club. A lot of different things, whether it was making a play, running the bases, stealing a base, get a big base hit. A lot of things for him. Works the walk. Nice job. Keeps the inning going with two outs. Ninth man to the plate now, Gerard Dyson. For A.J. Griffin, that's his third walk. And that'll probably do it for him. Looks like we're going to have a pitching change. He's reached that pitch, pitch limit. Jeff Bannister's seen enough. See him get knocked around here in the third. Eight men to the plate. Four runs on five hits. The inning is still in progress for the Mariners. We'll take a timeout. Come back. Mariners with a big early lead over the defending American League West champion Rangers. In the home third, Mariners a six nothing lead. It's been a very big third inning. Ranger highlights coming up for it, and the Rangers this season. Look at this. Ken Griffey Jr., April 14th, Mariners beard hat night. On May 5, Felix Hernandez bobblehead night and triple play ticket night the 20th. <laughs> Dyson 0 for 2, strike out and a pop up. Ninth man to the plate here in the third. Runner goes. Good jump by O'Malley. Throw safe. In with the stolen base. That's one of the things we were talking about. Pretty good jump by Sean. Yeah, tagged him right in the middle of the backhand, clearly on the base. One of the things that Scott Service has encouraged all these guys when they're playing in the games to take some chances and do some things and and try to make the ball club on your own. Top foul. <laughs> yes, Dyson had you swing it yesterday. Not good. Trying to rally back here today. Is he? Shortens up that swing. Moves up on the bat a little bit. Put it in play. And his speed's going to get him a base hit. O'Malley holds it third. Nicely done. The Mariners have batted around. Infield hit, Gerard Dyson. Yes, 
Yeah, they're playing for him to pull the ball. Actually, it's a back up the middle again, getting on top of a high fastball. Anytime an infielder is going to die for the ball, they know that no chance to get him. So runners at the corners. Two outs. Tenth man to the plate, Mitch Hanniger. Singled to center and scored earlier in this frame. Preston Claiborne, new pitcher for the Rangers. Hanniger already with a couple home runs on the sprint. Looks at a strike. Tenth man to the plate. Back safely is Dyson. Starting rotation for these Rangers anchored by Hugh Darvish and Cole Hamels. Question marks after that. Martin Perez is in that group too. Dyson takes off. Here's a pitch swung on and fouled back. Good jump. Hanniger can keep it going. You've got Guile Seeger. He's looking for his first hit. He's walked twice. Yeah. He did go. This is Chris Guccione. Hanniger's gone. But the inning is over. Ten men to the plate. Five runs on five hits. And one of the highlights. Look at Taylor Motter get on top of that fastball and let it fly. Mariners with a big 6 nothing lead. I get it. You want a new car. Field here just moments ago. If you're just joining us, Mariners with a big five run third inning, take a six nothing lead, and got a happy assistant hitting coach joining us right now, Scott Broch, is one time MVP in the World Series. Scott, you got to like what you saw for that young man. Yeah, there's a lot to like right now. There's been a couple pretty good swings out there. Uh, uh, Motter's been working real hard here as he kind of had a little bit of a, a cranky back early in camp, and so trying to get the swing back, and, and it looks like it's starting to arrive. Scott, Mike Zanino having a good day with the home run, long home run. 
and then the base hit to drive in a couple of more. Can you talk a little bit about Mike and maybe some of the time that you spent with him last year and, and what you're trying to accomplish here in spring training? Yeah, I think, you know, this year um, with Mike, obviously we spent a lot of time uh, together last year and really trying to just to help him and, you know, for himself to kind of define who he is, what type of hitter he is, and then be able to kind of trust um, that, you know, that process and that approach at the plate. Um, I think he there, were, there was a stretch there for where, uh, like a lot of young hitters, you're, you're kind of trying to chase a swing, trying to figure out who you are, and, and I think that was the big thing about last year is he started to get a real feel for who he needs to be. Uh, so he came into this spring training, I think, uh, and has been working in spring training um, on, he kind of knew exactly what he wanted to work on and, and had a specific, um, you know, kind of goal in mind, and, and I think that's really helped him uh, just to be kind of a, a more of a singular focus on, on what he wants to do up there. I thought it was interesting, the conversation I had with Mike the other day, and he said when you guys got together last year, you told him just get in there and swing. If you got any questions, I'll be here. And then Mike said, when I when when he went to you, you already knew the questions, man. You knew, <laughs> you knew what the setup was. Yeah, you know, I think honestly, when we got him early last year, I think he just he needed a time to kind of um, explore and kind of find himself a little bit and figure out who he was and and do it a little bit on his own terms. I think and he's had and and a lot of a lot of people working really hard with him and and but he but he's I think heard a lot of voices and and so I just sort of wanted to back off for a little while and and, and again just kind of let him come to a place where it's like okay. Now where do we go from here? You know, and and we we kind of knew um, ahead of time where where that was going to be, but I think he just needed the space to to kind of do that himself. What are some of the strengths that you've seen, or, or maybe a couple of things that you like about Mitch Hanniger? Well, I, I tell you what, there, there's never been a pitch he's not ready to hit. <laughs> um, you know, I, I love. You know, when you when you step into the batter's box, there's intent. You know, right? Um, he comes up there. He is he is focused and, and he's a hitter and has a hitter's mentality. And the way he prepares, uh, he prepares like a professional. It's from the cages in the morning through his batting practice. He does everything to put himself in a good position to hit. Hey, Scott, always a pleasure, man. Thanks for your time. I Appreciate it. it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You bet. Scott Brosius, assistant hitting coach, to Edgar Martinez, joining us here in the program. Six nothing Mariners. The Mariners Square. You have 20 chances to see history with a team that is locked in, reloaded, and ready to battle in the American League West. As a Mariners season ticket holder, you'll enjoy great benefits, including guaranteed postseason priority. So pick out a plan now at Mariners.com slash 17. We understand some of our viewers are experiencing jittery video. We are working on it. Dave Sims, Mike Blowers, Root Sports Crew on hand here. 
As the Mariners take on the Texas Rangers, and won the American League West the last two seasons. It's been a big offensive explosion, Mike, in the middle of this batting order. Well, and again, it's from a lot of the guys that you want to see swing the bat well. Hanniger with a base hit has scored a run. Mike Zanino, two for two, two extra base hits, has driven in three. The home run from Motter. Um, Sean O'Malley has been on base a couple of times, has a stolen base in the game, so it's, uh, it's been a productive day. Well, Kyle Seeger is going to be the first batter for Jose Leclerc, new pitcher, third of the day for the Texas Rangers. Seeger's twice walked. 3 0 pitch and a 3 1 pitch. Looking for his fourth hit of the spring. He's Seeger, Valencia, and Vogel back 3 4 and 5 in the Mar Mariner order. I thought it was interesting, Kyle, talking about one of the things he wanted to work with in his conversation with you that we ran the pregame that wanted to get better going to his left. Yeah, I think for him, it, it, it really, it, especially at third base, I, I think you really have to be aware of your feet. It starts from the ground up, and for Kyle, he just felt that maybe he was getting a little bit lazy going to his left, and it cost him to make some errors, so he wanted to clean that part of it up. Pops this up. How do you work on that? How do you go about working on something like that? Well, he was talking about him and Tim Bogar. It's just what, what you would think. He, he gets in a stationary position like he normally would get set, and then Bogar just makes him basically read off the bat. And that's the biggest thing to it. It's more than just the fungo stuff. It's, you can get some stuff where you have to read it and, and, and just work on your feet. And for him, the thing he wanted to is to make sure that when he was going to his left and bending over to field the ground ball that he was staying in his legs because sometimes you can straighten up a little bit and now you're having to reach further and that's typically when you'll see it go off the end of your glove. So you just want to get into his legs a little bit more. So Tim Bogar, right of your screen, he was and several of the other coaches were with the split squad down in Camelback when the Mariners lost to the Dodgers. <laughs> Danny Valencia 0 for 2 with a run scored. I saw Tim today in the hallway and chatted with him a little bit. And then it went, right when I was leaving, I asked him if he was getting any sleep yet. And he said, yeah, but I have to go to bed at 7.30. I believe it. <laughs> I, I believe it. Would you have him, what, 4.30 one day? 4.30 here. Yeah, at the ballpark. So he's the night watchman. That, that's is, in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> night watchman about to knock off there, and here comes Bogues. 7.30. I don't remember my kids when they were infants going to bed at 730. That's really early. Right, but you, if you're getting to the ballpark at 430. So you're getting up at 345, shower, yep. shave. Yep. Man. And you you run a few of those days together, you may go to bed at 730. 730, might be able to see you and raise you at 6. <laughs> and the other thing, too, you and I, I remember I asked you yesterday, I said, hey, man, we've both been down here Thursday. That's sun kicking your butt. And you went, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, it's one of the things down here, too. It's, it's amazing. And you talk to the coaches and just all the different bodies that are running around, how guys are feeling, pitchers, who's going to get their work in. Uh, they have to manage all that stuff. They, they had a B game going on this morning just yeah. to try to get some guys, some pitchers, a chance to get on the mound. And they have to manage all of that and keep track of it. Backing up the center fielder, Robinson. Plenty of room. Two away. It was nice watching a B game of a lot of guys from being rookie ball, A ball. And saw a couple of nice performances. Names escape me right now, but I saw a center fielder throw a guy out at home plate by 20 feet. That was nice. Here's Vogel back, strike out, an RBI single, and a run scored. And I can honestly say, and I think you'll agree with me, and I think you'll agree with me, you would have given long odds on him scoring from first, though. <laughs> With all due respect. He worked hard this winter. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I said, dude, you are. I said, how big were you as a baby? He says, I don't remember, but I was 290 as a high school sophomore. 290s, 260 now. That's a big dude. That is. You're right. <laughs> Back leg one here. He tried to with the first swing he took. 
You know, the thing about it, too, is these guys at the end of the season, you know, get their marching orders from Scott Service and the coaching staff, and he obviously listened and, and worked hard this winter. Talked a lot about his feet and different things that he's doing to improve defensively. Another thing you always hear about the number supported. He does have a good eye. We've seen that in the spring so far. At 336 walks in his minor league career dating back to 2011. Against 393 strikeouts. Which Jay always say looks hitterish. Looks hitterish. Did a nice job down the count 0 2 to get it back to full. Oh, that's hit hard, but a one hopper right to the second baseman. Bernier, and that'll do it for the Mariners. They go 1 2 3 in the fourth. Good news, you look at the scoreboard, it shows the Mariners lead 6 0. Here at the board sports desk, we are in our second of 16 Cactus Leagues games They're right here on Root Sports to get you geared up for 2017. But it doesn't mean that we're quite ready to forget about 2016 yet. Tune in tonight at 4 p.m. Pacific to join us in celebrating baseball's return in this week's episode of Mariners Monday. We'll take a look back at the opening series of 2016 against these very same Texas Rangers. It's a series that really set the tone for the rest of the year. So make sure you stick around after the game. Dave, back to you. Angie, thank you. Max Posey continues on here. He threw a one, two, three, fourth. He's got Travis Snyder leading off. Strategically placed. O'Malley is there to throw out Snyder. And Washington NATO throwing out another. AJ Jimenez coming up the catcher. Struck out first time. Posey, a big man on the mound. Looks like he's throwing hard this afternoon. Throwing a lot of strikes. It folds out there. You're right. That's <laughs> six eight two twenty. Out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Came over in a four-player trade with uh, Atlanta, along with Rob Whalen, who pitched in that B game this morning in exchange for Alex Jackson and Tyler Pike. I'm going to buy the 6 8. The 220, I'm not too sure about. 
along with Ukrainian judge uh, <laughs> denying that reading. I don't think he's seen 220 since his senior year in high school. <laughs> Big man. Mm. That's a good look pitch. Two down. Always good to see fans from Great Pacific Northwest, specifically Bellingham, Washington, down here. Good to see them. It's beautiful. Come here. down and enjoy the sun. And it's going to get warmer. You said today's what? Today's Monday, so it's going to get uh, warmer later on in the week. Upper 80s, maybe even touching 90. Get the caps, hats, and sunscreen ready. I thought it was pretty interesting today. The Mariners, we were talking about the B game, and so the B game was on what would be their normal field yep. uh, to work out on. They work out on the field four and just going down there and seeing all the fans. It just showed those folks from Bellingham, but a lot of fun for them down here to get that close to the guys. They can hear them and the conversations that they're having as they're working out. And then catch them, it's great pick experience. them off as they go from field to field, get yeah. an autograph or a picture. Yeah. It's a good setup. Ball and two strikes. Posey's faced five batters, retired all of them. They have a hoop game. I'm picking him first. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> good plan. Pretty good breaking ball, too. Got some room. There you go. Tired all six men that he faces. Valencia ends the top of the fifth for the Rangers. Mariners in charge, 6-0. The Joshua Tree to make your way from Peoria to Las Vegas. So much natural beauty here in the state of Arizona with the Mariners lead by the count of six nothing over the Texas Rangers. Mariners come into today's spring game a six and four record. Texas a two and seven. Beautiful day here, no clouds, blue sky, a lot of sunshine. Temperature as we speak at 66 degrees here in Peoria. All right. I like the the headgear protecting the youngster. Yep. It's like double headgear. I have great memories of those juice boxes and whatnot when my guys were that age. Pretty good crowd on the berm. And, well, you want to talk about a big crowd coming up later on as we move through the week. Our next telecast Wednesday here against Cleveland. The Cubs take on the Cubs here Friday and that will be an invasion of Chicago land folks they travel and we talked about it the other day seems like they have everybody from the great Midwest we're Cub fans they come down here and stay down here and they sell out their ballpark and they pretty much take over everybody else's ballpark you're right better get here early 
play the uh, Cubs at their place in Mesa Thursday. That'll be on radio. And then over here at Peoria, it'll be on TV at 12:10. First pitch. Here's one of the stars today. Got it going for the Mariners. Led off the second inning with a home run. Came back in the third inning with a two-run double. Mike Zanino. He's facing Eddie Gamboa, new pitcher. Gotta like when you see some of those pitches on the outside corner, breaking balls. Not flinching at him or waving at him or flailing at him now. It's he looks really comfortable today, doesn't he? No doubt. Give him the green. Ooh. Got under. Ooh. Turned him loose 3 0. One down here in the Mariners' fifth. Taylor Motter stepping in. What a home run he hit his last time up. If you missed it, he ended up taking a breaking ball and then he just tomahawked a fastball out on the berm, left center field. Play him straight away in the infield and outfield. Another breaking ball slipped. Wind has calmed down just a little bit. Light breeze blowing towards right. Two and one. Two run homer back in the third. Third hit of the spring, Taylor Motter. Two and two. Wait, hear the crowd groaning on that. They didn't <laughs> like that call at all by Trip Trip Gibson. I tell you, Taylor didn't like it either. Threw another one and ripped it. Not familiar with Gamboa, but it looks like he's throwing knuckleballs up there. Yeah. Right. We're at a full count. Three two pitch. That's exactly what it was. Good call. Keep these in mind, these dates at Safeco Field. First time the Rangers come in, it's April 14th through the 16th. Then they come in in May, Felix Bobblehead Night, September 19th through the 21st. All games start at 7:10. And another reminder too, on April 14th, it's Ken Griffey Jr. replica statue night. So they want to get involved in that as well. Here's already a ground out and a strikeout, looking on a breaking ball. Got eight hits on the spring. He's done well. Everybody's safe. Another hit for Guillermo Heredia. The Mariners with one out. A couple of men aboard. And when you're hot, you're hot. Third baseman playing in right out in front of the plate and bounces it over his head. He'll play for the shortstop. He runs too well. Heard a story secondhand. Of somebody was talking to Heredia. Said when he was playing down in Cuba with all his speed, they wouldn't let him run. Like really? Brian Hunter, who's Why? former player. I was just I, that was the. Everybody's shaking their head as, as I heard that story. Brian Hunter and a few other guys. <laughs> Can't you fly. <laughs> Malley base hit to right a walk and a stolen base today. <laughs> Two and 
Dude, that's what I should Tim Wakefield flashbacks watching this knuckleball? Why not? <laughs> what do you get, two salamis off of him? Uh, one grand slam. And Bullock coming over from Tampa Bay. Loney, and that ball hits the runner. Scoring his modern Heredia to third save. Loney's a slick fielder at first, but that throw was offline, and Mariners are going to benefit. Well, we'll see if the shortstop is blocked out by the runner, and he was. Threw it on the other side of him, almost a sinker. Another run on the board for the Mariners, 7-0. E3 in the throw. Top of the order, here's Dyson, fourth time. Got an infield hit last time, that was in the third. Now Eddie Gamboa in some more trouble here. Get back to the top of the order. Last year, his first year in the big leagues. 0-2 oh with a 1-3-5 at Tampa Bay. There's a strike. This after starting his pro career back in 08. It's Bluefield. He knocked around the minors for a long time. Got to play in seven games last year for the Rays. 1-1 one, one to Dyson. Malley, board fielder's choice, E3, runs scores, 7 0 Mariners. Break, make that another knuckleball, slow roller. They'll get the front end, not the back end. Runs scores, 8 0 Mariners. Dyson found another gear the last few steps. Well, unless he hits a one hopper right at you, or there isn't going to be much of a chance to turn it on him. Jams him with the knuckleball, but you can see him get down the line, and you're right. That'll do it for Dyson for today. Boot Powell takes over for him. Pitch run for him. What an asset that speed is. See if Boog wants some of that action. See if he'll get involved in a run game. Oh. He did get him. Yeah. You, you saw it. Mm -hmm. Leaning. Ready to go. So they pick him off. Mariners do score twice and build the lead to eight nothing. Follow us on Twitter.
Oh, one of the offensive stars for the Mariners today. Got things rolling in the second, leading off the second inning. 3-1 pitch. He crushed one. Long, long gone here, Mike. Just missed hitting the scoreboard out in left center field all the way to the top of the berm. Towering home run for Zanino. The second of the spring. And then another solid base hit. Look at that cut fastball away from him, but he hits it in the left center field gap. That'll drive in a couple of runs. Good afternoon for Mike Zanino, continuing to build his confidence. Mobile back scoring on that play from first base. So the five, six, and seven hitters done some damage. Vogelback and RBI single, Sanino, which we just showed you, he's driven in three and monitor a two run homer. Cody Martin will be the new pitcher. Pride of Gonzaga. Been up and down in the major leagues the last few years. He's with Atlanta, 21 games in 15. Oakland in that same season pitched for four games. And then last year, nine games with the Mariners with a one and two record, a 3 8 6. Started a couple of games when things got a little bit thin there late in the second half. Hanser Alberto will lead it off. He's a shortstop batting in the nine hole. Get a sports hernia injury has everyday shortstop Elvis Andrews recuperating. He'll just be back for a four opening day. Well, two strikes. To Shields and Robinson to follow here for Texas. Cody was a big part of the pitching depth for the Mariners last year. You mentioned him getting a couple of starts. Mariners used 13 starting pitchers last year, so hopefully that won't be the case this year. Hopefully that. guys stay healthy one and two are able to perform well. But he's part of the depth for this organization. It pitched well. Did you mention a 3-8 ERA? I like the fact that Smiley and Gallardo looking for big bounce back here. So is Felix. Iwakuma steady. Paxton, this could be a breakout year for him if everything goes right. You mentioned Felix. I was talking to Stottlemyre today about Felix, and he was really happy with his outing yesterday. Good. Just the way that he was able to make some adjustments, improve, and that he threw his fastball a lot more and had a good fastball. Tough first inning, and boy, did he settle down as Taylor yeah. Motter throws out Alberta one down. Top of the order. Here's DeShields for the third time. He's 0 for 2. Cody Martin out of Dos Palos, California. 27 years old, 6'3", 230. It's the closest thing maybe, certainly on this staff, to an old-fashioned full windup. He doesn't do the hands down where he does the deep rock, but he's he's at the top of it, gets the hands over the head. You don't see that much no, anymore. You don't. You don't see it much anymore. To go to YouTube and dial up baseball classics. I think he's always done that too. At least from when, the time that I've started watching him, he's, yeah. he's always done that. He's three and zero oh here. About four pitches. We talked about the full windup. We were in Minnesota at Target Field, and Rick Riz and I, Kevin Crimmin, we were going around looking at all the vintage photos and everything. There's Camilio Pasquale with the full windup, <laughs> man. Brought back memories. Mariners Spring Training Baseball is always live with the MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. Drew Robinson, go for two. Mariners caught a break and hit the umpire in the shin guard to keep it close to Mike, keeping the runner from advancing. Yeah. 
shift on against Robinson. Foul. Be on the air on Wednesday. Tomorrow's a complete day off for everybody. Back on the air Wednesday, 6 10 Pacific time against the Indians, the defending American League champions. Friday at 12 10 against the Cubs. Saturday, 12 10 against the Reds. 16 telecast. Here in Root Sports, second time the Mariners and Root Sports have hit that number. Only the Angels and Phillies televised more spring training games than the Mariners. Pre-game will start at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Out. Way out in front of that one. And for those Friday and Saturday games, we'll be on the air at noon. Be good to shake hands and congratulate the Cubs on their win. Ditto Cleveland on their winning the American League. Saturday, I hope to see the Hall of Famer himself, Marty Brenneman, long time, the voice of the Cincinnati Reds. Swing and a miss. Robinson way late on that. Cody Martin with a strikeout, two away. And a new kids field. That's pretty impressive. Get your hacks in. Why not? You bet. Some wiffle ball. <laughs> Great memories. Narrow streets of Philly used to play half ball. Take sort of like a Spalding, cut that baby in half. The streets are only been so long. You just don't want to break somebody's window. You just get you, you know, hit. You get your hacks in. You really got to, you got to focus in though. It's only half throw the ball come. You can throw a pretty good breaking ball with that too, couldn't you? Yeah, but you hold it. You throw it with, like, um, with the moon part of it, the top of it, and you're flipping it underhand like that, and that's like tough. A frisbee. Man. Yeah. Okay. Tight urban spaces. You do what you can do. <laughs> And we moved to another neighborhood, then you had a parking lot, and then you just get the tennis ball and broom. Hey, Mom, you don't need that broom, do you? Oh, we used to saw him off all the time. <laughs> Go Middlebrooks. Boy, it's been a while since we saw him. He's batting place at Beltre in a three-hole. Former Red Sox. He set up the middle. Runner to third, safe there. And Brooks back to first. We keep Gallo in the ballpark here. He's powerful hitter. He's walked and popped out to Seeger at third. Got his first batter to ground out, walked the second, got a strikeout, now base hit Middlebrooks. Trying to get out of the sixth. On Wednesday, you're going to see Iwakuma and Miranda. <laughs> Cleveland Ball Club, they, they lose Mike Napoli, but pick up a sign uh, Edwin and Carnacion as a free agent. There's a strike, Napoli. 
back with the Rangers. First look at the Rangers in Seattle be the 14th of April. Home openers the 10th. That's against Houston. We'll see plenty of Houston. Four first four games open up the season down there. Then on to Anaheim, completing the first week of the season. Then the Mariners go three at home against Houston, three at home against Texas, followed by Ichiro and the Miami Marlins. Nice job by Cody Martin. Tag applied by Zanino. Threat dies right there. Home six coming up. Mariners shutting out the Rangers. Ain't nothing. Ball in my youth in Philadelphia. Let's talk to Dave Valley about his days as a stickball player in Queens, New York. Yeah, Val, guys, what do you remember about calling I mean, the guys? Hey, we're going out of the corner. Come on, let's go. Hey, I remember being out there from sun up to sundown in the summertime. <laughs> Uh, the most that I played was in the schoolyard. So what we would do is be, we'd just draw the box on the wall. Yep. And you'd get these old, uh, some older folks out there might remember the Pensy Pinky rubber ball. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. And they'd also, we would actually use an, a real broomstick because we couldn't afford to buy the, like, the real stick ball stick. That was probably, no chance. you know, cost about right. two, two ninety nine. So we, we'd take my mom's broomstick, put some adhesive tape on the bottom for the grip. And we'd go up to Bayside High School, and we would play there till it got dark. And what we played was a game called automatics. So if you hit the ball on the ground, you were out in front of yep. the pitcher. You're, it's an automatic out. So it actually it plays well for today's baseball, right? We want to get the ball in the air. Every, all these guys are talking about getting in the air. So a ball in the air past the pitcher is a base hit. And then out on the, was a, the, the fence right in front of 32nd Street, if you hit the base of the wall, it was a single. The second tier was a double. The third tier was a triple. Over the fence was a homer. Over the street was an automatic grand slam. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so all you needed was two guys, and it's on, right? It was, and you it didn't was, have anybody screaming at you to get off the lawn. <laughs> That's right. There, there was, there's also, in, in New York, I played it a few times, but n not as much as I did in the schoolyard was, you know, you're in the street. Kind of remember uh, Willie Mays's videos of sure. seeing Willie play with the kids, where right. you know the sewer cap was second mm -hmm. base out, in, then you'd pick a car on the right side of the street and a Buick. car on the left side of the street, and you try to hit and the ball just, up the middle. Right, the Buick on the right, the Soto on the left. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I tell you what, that's that's how I learned to play baseball. I remember mimicking all of the big leaguers, whether it was Willie Stargell. Uh, you know, guys, Thurman Munson, guys that I grew up watching, Reggie Jackson. I, I'd hit left-handed and right-handed just for the fun of it. Sure. But it Did wasn't like this field. Look how, look how manicured that field was right there. 
Yeah. Did you ever play Home Run Derby? Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 There was a tennis court that old tennis court that was wasn't too far from our house and the same thing a broomstick and a tennis ball and everything was an out but a home run. <laughs> and we, we would do that for hours. Same thing. You only needed a couple of guys to play it. That's right. right. Lift and separate. That's it. And then when we when yeah. I was playing with guys doing the playing a home run derby, I'll never forget he's a retired Air Force guy now. He was broadcasting a game as he's pitching. Here's the <laughs> he would be Juan Marichal. He'd stick that leg up in your face. Here's the two two from Marichal. I used to love seeing the old show, Home Run Derby. It was great. It was. It was. Yeah. Catch yeah, that, and that, for you youngsters, catch that on YouTube. It is a treat. You see, Slay, it was only one season. I was just reading up on that recently. Is that right? right? Yeah. It, it, Killebrew, K-Line, Mays, Mantle. Yeah, the lineup uh, was Banks, amazing. Ernie Hammer. Lineup was amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what? I just, I just thought of this. The, the Pensy Pinky, the ball that I was talking about. Right. When it was raining and that Pensy Pinky got wet, you talk about a spitball. I mean, that thing would move all <laughs> make, over make the place. Dance. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Some fun yeah, days, though, in the summertime back in New York City. No doubt about it, Val. Thanks, man. That, and you're right about that Willie Mays video. That's a, fa that's a famous Classic. piece, actually, film of him uh, choosing up sides in the street up in, up in Harlem and when he was with the New York Giants. I uh, remember they bounced the ball to him, didn't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. And he crushed it. Too. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good-looking swing. Hey, hey, kid, go get it. <laughs> Kyle Seeger checking in with a base hit. His first today. He's walked twice and popped out. I feel good about that. On oh, the outside corner, good looking swing. We oh, ended up going to the cages. I know when he was hitting on the field, he was saying he was going to go to the cages. Mm -hmm. Tyler Herb's going to run for. He's going to run for Seeger. And you got Kyle Waldrop. He's running for Hanniger at second. Valencia today, 0 for 3 with a run scored as Mariners starter Drew Smiley joins us right now. Dave Sims and Mike Blowers with you, Drew. What'd you think of your performance today? Uh, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> if they can all come like that, it'll be a good year. But um, yeah, just working on command, consistency with my pitches, and trying to attack guys to get 0 2 1 2. I had an interesting conversation uh, with Mel today, Drew, about you and, and everybody knowing there's a chance for you to go and play in the World Baseball Classic. and. I was just asking Mel as far as your your workload and where you're trying to be and, and accomplish and a little bit different than most springs for you. In fact, he was telling me that after your outing today that I believe he said on the ninth you're going to throw in a sim game just to, so you continue to face batters before you know what you're going to do with the World Baseball Classic. Uh, yeah, um, I think I'm going to be I'm going to pitch in it. That's for sure. Um, just one game and then I'll report back to Seattle. But I'm really excited for the opportunity to wear USA across my chest and be able to play with the guys on that team is going to be a fun experience. Hey, what's it mean for you coming to this ball club uh, uh, here in Seattle? Um, I'm really excited. You know, that we got such a great team here. Um, so, I mean, we're very capable of winning. Everybody knows uh, what we got, and there's a lot of optimism in the clubhouse. And, um, you know, if we stay healthy and just take it day by day and everybody does what, what they're capable of doing, I think it's going to be a really fun year. Where do you typically like to be at, towards the end of spring training when you're starting the season? How many innings do you want to be able to go and, and pitches? How many pitches do you uh, want to, be able to throw? I don't really know about innings, but just gradually build up, you know, go from two, three, four, five, six, you know. Um, and then usually the start before regular season, we tame it down a little bit just so I can be as fresh as possible come game one. But... My arms feels great right now. My body feels good. Um, like I said, I'm just every at, every time out, just keep working on consistency of your pitches and see what happens. A well, pretty good performance here, pal. Three innings, one hit, one walk, three Ks, 45 pitches, 29 for strikes. Uh, coming out of last year, what's the one thing you wanted to concentrate on? You wanted to, to improve on this year? Um, fella, I mean, I keep saying it, but more consistency. Last okay. year, I was a little, I was a little banged up in 2015, and, go. and going into 16, my, my whole mindset was stay healthy. You know, just stay the course and take the ball every time you ch you have the chance and make 30 starts. And I did that last year. You know, at times it was a little rocky, and I went through a rough patch, but. Going into last season, my goal was to be able to be there for the team and take the ball and give them a chance to win. And uh, coming out this year, you know, obviously that's the same goal is, is take the ball. But um, 
having a little more determination and knowing that I want my team to know that when it's my start, you know, they can count on me and we got a good chance to win. That's well, a good situation for you. Hey, what's it been like watching this guy, Vogel, Daniel Vogelback, swing the bat? Oh, he's, he's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's his first impression. He's a big, strong guy. Um, if he can... If he can hit for us, I mean, that's just another another bat in the lineup that's going to do damage. Like I said, this lineup is has been really fun to watch so far. Just one through nine, these guys can hit, and when they score runs for us like they are today, um, we're going to have a great season. How's it been for you working with Mike Zanino behind the plate? Oh, he's been great. Um, we've got off to a great start together. It's He's... He's very uh, approachable. You know, we talk every day about our approach towards the hitters, and I know he knows these guys. And f two games in, um, we're working together great. I mean, he, his pitch framing ability has been outstanding in my eyes. And, you know, the more we get to throw each other, we're going to learn learn what we like to do and how to go about attacking hitters. But I'm excited to work with him throughout the year. Hey, Drew, good to have you aboard, man. Thanks a lot for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You bet. Daniel Volga back 3-1 count here, Mike. Turn it loose, right? Amen. Bases loaded, nobody out. Double play ball. Picks up a run, though. Mariners have a 9 nothing lead. Scoring on the play was Waldron. Tyler Erb over the third. Here's Mike Zanino. It's one thing when you hear it from the coaches, but when you hear from the from the pitchers themselves about Zanino's ability to catch and framing, you can tell it they value it at a very high level. Especially when you're hearing it from people that have been around for a while and, and have been with different organizations and seen different guys. You bet. And, yeah, pretty strong statement. Good count for Mike, 2-0. Oh. Runner at third, a run in, two outs. He took a shot last time up 3-0, and oh, flied out the center. And for a pitch walk. That's the third walk issued by Eddie Gamboa. James Ramsey, a pitch run for Zanino. Gave up two runs on one hit in the fifth and struggling here. Giving up a run. He's got runners at the corners. And Taylor Mata, Mater had a two-run homer back in the third. It's one for two with a walk. Two runs scored. Look at this pitch that he hits and look how far it goes. Tomahawks it. Middle and above the belt. Nice catch. And attention. There's a strike one and one. <laughs> Ball and two strikes. Two pitch, pie. Two two. Here's 
throw him a strike here. He's having a tough time with that knuckleball. He's been behind a lot of hitters. Three two pitch. Ooh. Well, in the inning, Mariners get another run. We played six, and when we come back, we're going to hear from Shannon Dreyer, Mariners ESPN Radio 710 reporter. Coming up next, the Mariners. By YouTube, a uh, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> Mariners lead nine nothing. It is a beautiful day. Look at that weather. Joining us right now, Mariners reporter on the radio side at ESPN 710, Shannon Dreyer. Shannon, good to have you here at TV side. How are you? I'm well. You guys did it right. It was cold up until you landed. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that's Mike's big son of personality. Here. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. <laughs> What do you like so far about this ball club from what you've seen since you've been down here? You've been down here about coming up on a month. I like how it appears they picked up where they left off. You know, you, that big dramatic ending where they just uh, came up short and guys were talking about it in such a heartfelt manner. It seems like everybody took that to heart in the off season, And you see them show up, and it, it felt like they were three weeks in on the second day. That's an excellent point. It's James Loney looks at ball one. Scott Service in his second year now, Shannon. Anything different this year in camp than maybe what we saw last year? Or has it he's been pretty consistent, I would say, overall? But have you noticed anything different? It's gotten a little more creative, which is, you know, pretty impressive with what we saw last year. But in some of the drills, uh, some areas that they needed to improve. And you looked at the pitcher's fielding practice, and they always kind of, and it's so routine. You've seen the same thing year after year after year. And it was a challenge for the pitchers at times. Well, this year you got out there, and all of a sudden they've got the football nets out there that the quarterbacks <laughs> throw to with a bullseye target in the morning. That's a little different. But, you know, it changes things up for them. They've done some things a little bit different on the bases. Um, you know, that was a huge disappointment last year. You saw the work that they put in, and then they took kind of the reins off when they got into games. Run, 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 and they thought they were going to be a better base running team, and they weren't. And it wasn't for lack of effort in spring training, but they had to go back to the drawing board on that. How difficult do you think it's going to be? Because I, I think it's going to be interesting when you, when you have Dyson in the lineup and you have Martin in the lineup, uh, Segura in the lineup. But you also have those guys in the middle of your lineup right. and you don't want to run yourself out of innings. How do you think Scott's going to manage all of that? Well, I, I think uh, Dyson and Segura are going to have the green light. And Dyson in particular has uh, done this so much. This has been his game. He knows when to go. And it's that probably a little hard with a guy like that because I talked to him and I said, you pretty much in your mind, you're guaranteed that you're going to make it, aren't you? He's not thinking he's not. You know, right. regardless of who comes up behind him. But I think it's going to be a little bit more of an adjustment for the big guys because they will be moving a little bit over at first base, and they're not used to that as much. But uh, I think Dyson's done it enough that he's smart to know when to go and when not to go. I, I had a conversation with Kyle Seeger this morning, and I thought it was interesting. Kyle made a good point because we've talked a lot about the stolen bases, but Kyle was saying 
just to see guys score on base hits, consistently score, and not get thrown out trying to take extra bases because that's something that we haven't really talked a lot about other than the steals. And interestingly enough, the middle of the order was one of the prime suspects on that, and that's yeah. something that Scott went right after. And when you talk about working on, you know, the bases and the base running, you're thinking one, two, eight, and nine. And the first numbers that came out from him were three, four, five. So those guys are on base a lot. They need to be better at staying on base and scoring. Travis Snyder goes the other way. I'm going to shift gears momentarily. What did you think when you heard the sound of the mariachi band today? <laughs> it's not so much what I, I thought. Well, now I've seen it all. <laughs> That's it. I can go home. Celebrating the 29th birthday of Leonis Martin, four-piece mariachi band. They were good. They were good, and they played for three hours straight, which isn't too tough for the guitar and the fiddle, but that trumpet player, yeah, that's yeah. that's a lot of playing right there. And you they being were, a trumpet player. Well, yes, but anybody who's played any kind of band-type instrument three hours straight in the sun. <laughs> Leonis was, you know, very, very considerate, and they were out on one of the backfields uh, doing some sun drills, some pop-up drills, and Leonis is yelling over to the club, agua, agua, <laughs> for the band because they were all in black. Wanted to make sure they were taken care of. I didn't get a chance to see him until towards the end of the day were they in harm's way at all because i heard they were following him everywhere <laughs> <laughs> there was no live bp thank goodness i thought i was in harm's way for a little bit because we turned into paparazzi at that point and we're following and filming and tweeting and everything else and next thing i know i'm in the middle of the field you know that's not a good not where i want to be but luckily uh, it was just uh, coaches and drills and things like that they were back against the batter's eye though at one point but fernando uh, the media relations staff i think had him covered pretty well Line drive, Travis Snyder. He's got extra bases. Kyle Waldrop will get it back in. Well, you got to like the, the fact we were talking about earlier, Shannon, about uh, Scott's ability to keep guys, you know, bring them in, keep them loose, and really enforce, you know, guys getting to know each other and coming together. Well, that's what that morning meeting is, is all about. And it, it apparently is playing well this year, too. I remember when we first heard that they were going to have the get to know you's in the morning and the off campus <laughs> activities. We're like, okay, good luck with that one. But you know what? It, it, the guys bought into it. They want to have fun as well. You know, they're very serious about the work that they put in. But uh, I think Scott has a philosophy if you know the guys around you, you're going to play harder. So uh, it's not a matter of uh, waiting for you to show your personality. They're going to bring it out with a lot of the young guys they are called on and if you're smart in these meetings uh, you're careful because a year ago it was Tony Zick well you know what do you do what do you like you play I play pool are you good yeah I'm really good go get us a pool table I want it in the clubhouse in three days so he has to show it this year it's Tyler O'Neill what are your hobbies well I, I play a good piano <laughs> bring the piano in. we're gonna have a recital it's played by Zach Shank we had a good day over in Colorado a couple of days ago some RBIs fine defensive play two down of the new guys in camp, Shannon, who's impressed you the most so far? Hmm. Is this Mitch Haniger, or, probably. Yeah, 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 I was thinking the same thing. I wasn't going to take long with you. I watched him all week, and I'm like, yep, Mike's going to like this one. He's a baseball player. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot to like there, and I think it's important, don't you? As far as, I mean, everybody talks about Segura for good reason, but he's a big part of that deal. Oh, it's just huge. All I right. mean, that they both are. Uh, I mean, because Segura also, especially in the early days, you know, first at bat is hitting home runs. He's you know stealing bases, running the bases well. Uh, you know, getting back into shortstop doesn't appear to be a problem. But Haniger, you know, just the approach that he brings to everything that he does, and if you have a conversation with him, very studied in what he does and kind of strikes me as remember when Kyle Seeger first came up because Haniger had a short cup of coffee mm -hmm. and didn't hit well remember when Kyle Seeger first came up and was yeah I called him the rookiest rookie I ever saw he, and you would never imagine that looking at him right now but he was up for a few weeks went down for a few weeks and came back a different person took everything that he saw processed it all and, and went to work and the next thing you know he kind of takes off I have a feeling that's going to be the same for Haniger. Yeah, Kyle, five years into his career right now, hasn't changed a bit with that. No. 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 And it's, you know, it's how you were brought up and uh, in, in the game. And Haniger said he had a very, very good high school coach and college coach, and they had a lot of the technology. So a lot of the, the stuff that they are studying in the base running and a lot of the numbers and a lot of you know, the different angles and whatnot that they talk about that are new, they're not new to him. Those are things that, that he's been exposed to before. So he's so comfortable with all of that. He's comfortable with all of that, and he uses all of that. And to add to that, I was talking to Rick Griffin yesterday 
and Hanniger's name came up, and he says, you know, the Arizona trainer told me he doesn't look like Jay Buhner, but he's got Buhner-like pop. And the two home runs, the one he hit dead central uh, the other day in surprise, and the one he hit a camelback sort of illustrates that point. Now, that's saying, I mean, Jay hit a whole bunch of home runs. Let's not get carried away. But that is an indicator of what could be in front of us here. He's not trying to hit home runs. That's actually something exactly. he tried to get away. You know, he, he made a change for the swing a couple of years ago, got a little bit more of that leg kick. He uses more of the field as more of a hitter right now, but there's no question that pop is there. Got two outs and a 2 2 pitch here to Doug Bernier. Fouled off. Somebody in the bullpen that fans should be looking forward to and a, 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 a different than the normal guys that they're already aware of. But anybody in camp that has impressed you on that well, end of it. That's kind of a tough one because that's very set. I, I think there's probably only one spot but uh, a couple of impressive names or new names and James Pazos and Chase Simmons you know from the right side and the left side you've got guys there that I, I think are ready right away when they need him. And of course we saw Vieira the other day and <laughs> you know when he gets that command. Oh, he's got to be ridiculous he's when he gets that command. He's got to get that command, but when he gets that command, he is going to be a force out there. Okay. Got it. Pazos, I was, I was, with Pazos, I, I was talking to Mel this morning about him just because I was impressed with the way the ball comes out of his hand, and Mel. He spoke highly of him too, Shannon. He said as soon as he learns to command the strike zone consistently, uh, he really likes him a lot. And I think they've seen better command from him than what they thought coming in. I mean, this is an arm that they like, a raw right. arm that they like, and the command has been the issue with him. So, uh, you know, if Mel works some magic on him, there is a lefty spot that is open in the bullpen. Pazos has not blinked yet. I believe he's only allowed one hit in three outings. Uh, no runs. So, you know, it's early, but so far so good. Nice job by Cody Martin to shut it down right there. Shannon, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Anytime, gentlemen. Shannon Dreyer joining us here. This, this young man enjoying his day in the sun. The Mariners leave 9 0. What power? is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners to so take you to Andy Divine Avenue Route 66 Kingman Arizona and those of you of a certain age remember Andy Divine is a great cowboy sidekick from the TV side it was the adventures of Wild Bill Hickok appeared with Jack Benny a hundred times during the course of his career. He's in 400 films. Walter Brennan, Roy Rogers' sidekick in 10 films. John Wayne's sidekick and stagecoach. The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, a great movie, 1962, Andy Devine. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew here, 9 nothing Mariners, if you're just joining us. Mike Zanino, solo home run and a two-run double. Daniel Vogelback drove in a run. Taylor Motter hit a two-run home. Some of the highlights earlier with the starters in the game. Brady Dragmeyer 
is the new pitcher, and Eric Folia is the hitter for the Mariners. Andrew Smiley threw the ball well. Encouraging sign went three innings today. Was it usually about mid? About a week from now, today's the six, so we're still early. So about the 19th, that's when you start getting that itchy finger. It's, let's go already. We're ready. Yeah. We're done. Let's yeah. get out of here. They're going to break camp. I believe it's on the first this year. And they end up getting down here a little bit earlier because of the baseball club, World Baseball Classic. And so, yeah, I think that's probably a pretty good number, 17th through the 19th, somewhere in there. A lot of the guys will be ready to go. A host of minor leaguers now. I like the way Mike Zanino swung the bat here today. Falea puts it in place, short stop, throws him out. Andrew Alberto. One away. As part of the Mariners' 40th anniversary celebration, Mariners Team Store is offering a great lineup of apparel and souvenirs. So make sure you check out the 40th anniversary jersey, complete with a commemorative patch. It's going to be worn by the team this season. They're available now at Mariners Team Stores. Here's Mike Freeman getting his first at bat. Taking over a short stop for Sean O'Malley. Mike got the start in yesterday's game. Starting at second base. Went one, uh, make that 0 for 2 with a walk. Pitcher for the Rangers, Brady Dragmeyer, 6'1", 187 out of Sacramento, California. Lives in Elk Grove, California. Minor leagues in New Hampshire last year, 4 and 6 with a 4.38 ERA, 24 years old. It's a new era in Major League Baseball this year with retirement at the end of last season. Vince Scully, Dick Enberg, Houston's Bill Brown, Big, Big Poppy. Happy for Todd Callis. His dad, the Hall of Famer, Harry Callis. Takes over for Bill Brown on Houston TV. Dave Raymond takes over in Texas on Rangers TV. Don Orsillo has the complete package in San Diego. It coming last year in partial package. Base hit. Mike Freeman. He was able to stay on a changeup, running off the outside corner, and full count stays with it. Yeah, nice, good piece of hitting right here. That ball had some movement on it too. Solid line drive base hit in the left field. Mike Freeman aboard with one out brings up Book Powell. He came in as a pinch runner for Gerard Dyson back in the fifth inning and then got picked off in the third out.
and field double, double play depth. Play. Good speed out there, Freeman and Powell at the plate, two and one. Two one pitch. Three and one. Such is the nature of spring training ball. Once you get into the seventh inning, guys start nibbling, trying to be too fine instead of throwing strikes, and then you have a parade of walks. Well, you're going to see quite a bit of that over the next couple of weeks. A lot of clubs losing some of their pitchers and position players because of the World Baseball Classic. So you're going to see more kids from the minor leagues get a chance to play, and whether it's nerves or they're just not major league players, you're going to see a lot of that towards the end of the game. Kyle Waldrop. Slow roller. They get one. They do not get two. Frame into third. Now on full scale, third baseman, number 80, Zach Shank. They retire Powell at second. Two away. Here's Zach Shank. Chopper in front of the mound. And Dragmeyer throws him out. That'll do it for the Mariners. We go to the eighth inning here in Peoria. And with fond memories, we remember the great Dave Henderson who passed away a year or so.
football, right, are the last three. But we saw this in the postseason last year where maybe the guy's closer, maybe a team's closer, the Indians or the Cubs, would come in in the seventh or the eighth inning in the most critical and crucial point of the game. What say you? You know, there, there's a lot that goes into that when you start thinking about Andrew Miller, and I think that's the, the kind of the elephant in the room when people are talking about how do you use a bullpen late in a ball game. This was a guy who made all of his money as a closer. He signed a multi-year deal. So then as he started getting traded around to the Yankees and then to Cleveland, his response to his manager was like, hey, I don't care when you use me. I've already got... And, and I'm telling you from a player's perspective, I already have my money because I got paid as an elite closer. Now you can use me in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. I'll do whatever you think, whatever you need me to do. And that's how Tito used him in Cleveland and had a huge impact. And plus it was also, this is the playoffs. This is the very end. There is no tomorrow. I'll do whatever I can. So I, I do believe in the, the, the kind of the, uh, the strategic application of I'm going to use my best weapon at the most critical time and at that critical time might be in the eighth inning uh, but the thing about Cleveland they also had a guy who was used to closing as well so it wasn't like we're going to use Andrew Miller and we don't have anyone else who has the experience as a, of a closer so I think they were benefiting that uh, and I think the same situation was was in New York when they had Chapman Batances and Miller they had three guys who could close so yeah you could use any one of them in the seventh inning. Uh, but I think the whole idea of having roles is really starting to shift nowadays. Mm -hmm. Gene Machi on the uh, hill right now for the Seattle Mariners. Let's bring in Mike Blowers uh, from down in Peoria. And uh, Mike, Scott Service has already said when it comes to Eddie Diaz, uh, you're not going to see this guy in the seventh or the eighth inning. He's my ninth inning guy. Yeah, and, and I think that the biggest reason why you would do that is because he's so young yep. and he doesn't have a lot of experience and I think for for somebody like Diaz you want him to have that defined role and he knows when he's coming into the game and that he is the closer and he's going to pitch in the ninth inning as opposed to maybe putting him in the highest leverage position from the seventh through the ninth because the other part of it too um, I think Val touched on a couple of things one is you better have another guy behind him if you're going to bring him in earlier and two, the other thing with those guys, because it was the postseason, that's why I don't think you're going to see a lot of that during the regular season, is there, if a lot of those, those games, if you don't win those games, there's nothing left to play. It's over with. Um, that's not the case when you're playing 162. So there's a couple of other variables in there that you have to think about. But I like the fact that for now, um, and look, these guys know all the numbers, and they're very aware of all those things. But for Diaz, uh, this young man, I think the best thing is to keep him in that closer role and let him know when he's going to pitch, which is going to be in the ninth inning. Yeah, Diaz, just one of many uh, live arms that uh, Scott Service has to choose from. And that's also something interesting that we've seen over the last few years. Guys, and Dave, I'll start with you. You used to have one guy that was throwing 95 mm -hmm. out of the bullpen. Now every guy is throwing 95 plus. I mean, we, we're seeing nearly everybody's hitting triple digits. Yeah, I think over the last probably 20 years, we've seen this really this infiltration of power arms all the way through the bullpen. I remember Edgar, towards the end of his career, we were on a road trip somewhere, and uh, he came over and sat down with me. I was broadcasting at the time. He was still playing, and he goes, he goes, hey, Val, he goes, is it me? Or does everyone who come out of the bullpen throw 97 and 98 miles an hour? You know, because in the beginning of his career back in the 80s is to what you were talking about, Andrew. One guy who really threw hard, and he was the closer. Calvin Chiraldi of the Boston Red Sox was the closer. But nowadays, you're facing power arm after power arm. And you wouldn't mind doing that, right, Mike? It's easy. <laughs> Val and I retired at the right time. Yes, tell you that. yes we did. I, I, yes, we did. I, I, I think the game today is so difficult to hit. Um, you're, you're rarely going to see a starter for the fourth time around, maybe not even the third time around, which is an advantage to the hitter. And then you talk about all these power arms. Tough to hit these days. Right, uh, Machi makes it look uh, very easy in the top of the eighth, and uh, we are headed to the bottom of the eighth right after this uh, Mariners baseball on Route Sports. And right now, the Mariners making it look easy as well. They're up in this game, 9-0.
Watchman Tower on the right. I've not been in there, but I've flown over it and I've been on the edge there, and it is an incredible sight. Just absolutely beautiful. Grand Canyon here in the state of Arizona. Mariners lead it 9-0, our second Root Sports Mariner telecast of the spring. Back with you on Wednesday, 6 o'clock against Cleveland, 6 o'clock Pacific time. And then again on Friday, 12 o'clock, the Cubs, Saturday, the Reds. Beautiful day here. Look at the sky. We got 67 degrees. The wind blowing now right to left. The Mariners banged out nine runs on 10 hits. Alex Claudio takes over for the Rangers. It's been a common theme so far in spring training. A lot of Mariner offense. And carry this over. And again, I'm still trying to get used to the fact that Robbie Nelly and Gene Segura are all at the WBC. I keep wanting to look out there and see those guys. And, uh, well, we were lucky when we, were, we first came down and we were able to see them play in a game. Yeah, right. For our Wednesday telecast, it's one of the questions I want to ask uh, Scott Service. You miss them, don't you? <laughs> oh, man. I guarantee it. Here's DJ Peterson. They had a home run yesterday. Towering fly ball it just got over the fence in left field. That was in the eighth inning of yesterday's ball game. Struck out in the ninth with a couple men aboard for three loss. Second baseman's going to take care of this. Isaiah Kiner Falifa. There's one away. Spring training is underway, and it means the 2017 regular season is right around the corner. Still time for you to join the club as the Mariners' season ticket holder. You're going to enjoy great benefits, including the best seats at the best prices. For more info, log on to Mariners.com slash 17. Joe DiCarlo is the hitter. Some slingshot action from Alex Claudio. It'll probably take you a couple of pitches when you're standing in the batter's box to pick up his release point. Claudio, four and one, 39 games last year with Texas at 279 ERA. one pitch and it's no fun you sit on the bench the entire afternoon finally get a chance to hit take a fastball in the thigh catch a Tyler Marlette Arlette out of Ovidio, Florida, 5'11", 195. 24 years old. Taylor made double play ball. That'll do it for the Mariners in the eighth. Shutout lives, 9-0 Mariners. It's
some visits by the Texas Rangers, some special outings. How about April 14th, Ken Griffey Jr. replica statue night. They come back in May, Mariners beard hat night on the 5th of May. The 6th, it's Felix Hernandez bobblehead night. And then in September, triple play ticket night. Those are the three, encompassing some of the three visits by the Texas Rangers this season. Local product, the University of Washington, Nick Hagenoff takes over the mound here for ninth inning duties. Then with Cleveland, dating back to the 11th season. 36 games last year with the Tribal and one with a 4-2-8. Thrilled to be pitching for the Mariners, the team he grew up rooting for. One of the things that you and I have talked about over the years is as kids, if we had the opportunity to get down on the major league fields or to see the guys close like you can down here in spring training. Nick, I'm sure, will not have any recollection of this at all, but it's a couple of years ago. And he was working at one of the indoor facilities in the Northwest and just so happened that my son, who's a left-handed pitcher, happened to be there. He was 16 years old at the time, and they were standing on mounds right next to each other throwing their bullpens. Okay. And I think it was one or two pitches when my son stepped off of the back of the mound and just watched him because he was throwing about 95 to 97 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and when he was done, <laughs> I'm not so sure what the, he, th he thought of the whole situation, but uh, it, it was great for him to see that. And, I mean, if you're a, you know, a kid, you get a chance to see a major league pitcher standing right next to you throwing a bullpen and getting a workout. And Nick was great about it. A lot of the kids were asking questions and talking to him, but it was a pretty cool experience for those nice. kids. Love hearing stories like that, guys interacting well with the kids. Yeah, he was great. Oh, oh it's it just right, right to the point of the <laughs> Jerry DePoto signed Nick as a free agent January 31st. <laughs> Middlebrook's gone. Tag applied by Marlette, one away. Talking to Nick on the hot stove this winter, he was thrilled oh, to have signed with Seattle. Only imagine. Born in Sandpoint, Idaho. Asked him about his goals, and I thought he had a pretty good outlook on everything. He said, I just want to have a healthy season. If I'm healthy, the rest will take care of itself. I think that's a pretty good way to look at it. It takes a lot of pressure off of yourself, that's for sure. 15 season, he had lower back and elbow soreness. Missed some time. He had a broken bone in his left elbow. Ooh. Mile high pop. As it happens in breezy, windy, Arizona high sky and sun. And DJ did have a much better angle than the catcher, Tyler Marlette. <laughs> Take a look at it. You can see him breaking in on it, and then the ball started to drift back towards home plate, so he had to run a little bit harder. And you mentioned fighting the sun right off the end of his glove. <laughs> Charles Mormon, big cut. But two sixty sevens we have here. This is Ronald <laughs> Guzman. Kicks all the way over to Jeff Bannister, coaching staff. Wow. 
Wild pitch. Runner at second. Oh, two strikes here. Seriously, man. Hi, <laughs> two and two. Look out, it was just He has a pretty good fastball this afternoon. He does. Hagedon and Guzman. Let's go, better. Two two pitch. Breaking oh, ball hit foul. Do it again here, two and two. And holding on is Marlette, strikes him out, two down. A couple of strikeouts for him so far. Two away, Jared Hoying the hitter. Breaking ball looking good. Offensive day for the Mariners trying to put this one in the books at nine nothing. Hang it on two and one. Two one pitch. Drew Nicholas is on deck. Brett Nicholas. Get it back to Texas. You! The full cap. Seeing Nick in the past, it seemed that he basically relied on his fastball, and he had a good one. He was mid to upper 90s, but. Well, a lot more breaking balls here this afternoon. Grab a 5,483. Those who remain looking for a strikeout here. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Wow. Boy. 
Watkins. At the point for Rangers, the catcher, number six, Brad Nicholas. Two on, two out. Fly ball, right field, Waldrip there for the catch, and that's the ball game. Mariners win it 9 0. An impressive offensive display this afternoon by Scott Services Ball Club. Mike Blowers, I'm Dave Sims. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We send you off to Angie Menting. Guys,